Hi everybody, my name is Michelle and I work at St. Albert Public Library and I'm here with this week's Crafter New. So today I wanted to introduce you to the concept of story stones. So these are rocks that you paint with all kinds of characters and elements and items and really anything you want. And you can use them in storytelling to build imagination skills and language skills and they're overall just really fun. So I'm going to show you a couple that I've made. So here's one of the stones I've created and this is one way you can make these. I've just taken a picture from a magazine, glued it down with Mod Podge, and then added an extra layer to seal it in, and that makes it waterproof and has a little bit of a glossy shine. If you don't have Mod Podge at home, you can try sticking this down with white glue, but it's probably not going to have the same durability. Let me know if this works if you want to try that out. <laughs> So here's another stone I created, and this is one that I painted with acrylic paints, and it's Peter Rabbit from The Tale of Peter Rabbit. And one thing that's important with creating these that really makes them pop is to paint a white base coat down. So this one's completely painted black, and that the stone was black when I got it. It was used for a different craft. And so I just traced out the general shape that I wanted, painted a white base coat let it dry completely and then did my painting and some of the sharpie details on top of that and i would recommend that as a first step for any time you're painting on the stone the white base layer really gives your paint something to hold on to and it stays on the stone a lot nicer and it also makes all your other colors pop so that is my recommendation if you go that road and this one you might have noticed has something on the other side and I did this because I know that in the story of Peter Rabbit a transformation happens. Peter Rabbit starts with this beautiful blue jacket with brass buttons and then over the course of his ordeal he loses it crawling under Mr. McGregor's fence and he ends up with no jacket. So I think that's kind of a cool way to represent a change or a transformation. So you can do this with other things too. So on one side, you might want to have a caterpillar and a butterfly on the other side to show that transformation, or perhaps an egg on one side and a chick on the other. There's a lot of different options there, but I think it's a cool way to integrate that transformation or that change that might happen in a story. So I'll show you how this might work when you're telling a story. So I'm going to show the stones that I made specifically for the story of Peter Rabbit and you can do this too with a beloved story. You can also just come up with a random pictures that you can integrate into an original story. You can blend the two. So I took some of the major elements of the story and made my stones based on that. And so you can see some I've left the natural stone showing and I, I kind of like that with some elements, especially uh, stuff where it makes a lot of sense to have the natural stone showing through. So this is the lettuce in the garden, so why not have some of that earth, sh earthy tones and coloring and texture show through. So one thing you can do is tell the story and have your listener act out different parts of the story. So going to the garden and getting chased by Mr. McGregor and meeting the sparrow and the mouse and the cat who's over here. <laughs> and, and that is a neat way to build in a kinetic and an active element to listening. And I find that when I'm doing something with my hands, I, and especially if it's connected to what I'm listening to, I tend to retain that information better. And so that could be just a simple way of integrating story stones is actually acting out what's happening in the story. One thing you could also do is pause the story midway or partway through and have your listener from memory kind of reconstruct the sequence of events. Another thing you could do is not have them adhere to the original story, but cut the story off at a certain point, or maybe let it go to the end, and then ask your listener to construct the next day, maybe after Peter Rabbit returns home, or to construct an alternate series of events. It, it, that can build into that imaginative and creative capacity and those storytelling skills. I'm gonna show you another thing you can do with this. So if you're maybe working with a child or a group of children, one thing you can do is you can have the stones, I'll add in my other two in the middle, and each person picks a stone. So say you start the story, 
I chose the otter and I can start the story. The otter woke up bright and early and he left his house and what he saw was, and you pass it to the next person and they grab a stone and build from what you've started and on and on. You can go back and forth with one person or if you're in a group, everyone takes a turn and builds this story um just from their imaginations and so that's kind of an intentional use of these stones based on what you already want to say another thing you can do is so i'll take that one away because it has an image on the back but as you can turn these over and do the same thing start the story but what you're choosing is going to be random um so it kind of forces you to think on your feet and so if i were to choose this the frog hopped out of the bay and he was about to cross the street when, you know, and your next person chooses something at random and they have to try and figure out a way to integrate the mouse or the rat or whatever you think this is. So another thing you can do is integrate your story stones with creating a setting or story mapping. And you can always get a piece of paper and draw the different elements on there. I really like the idea though of finding other objects in your home that you can use to represent things in your story and to create different settings and again it's more of that imaginative play. So I'm basing this again off the story of Peter Rabbit. So I found uh, an old paper bag, I scrunched it up and this is the soil of the garden. So I'll show you the vegetables that go in the garden and then we can say Mr. McGregor's back here. He doesn't stand up quite nicely <laughs> but he's back there and then you know this this could be the fence perhaps these are just popsicle sticks that these are the maybe the fence that Peter Rabbit has to slip under to escape Mr. McGregor. So I can go over here or you can use popsicle sticks because they are so versatile to create different structures so maybe we're starting you know over here and this is Peter Rabbit, Rabbit's house. Um, there's a part also where he passes by a pond with a cat that is looking at a fish and he does not want to incur the wrath of this cat so he sneaks past her. Let's see, where is he? Oh, he still has his jacket at that point. <laughs> and slips away and so these are just other elements that again integrate this creative and imaginative component but are reusable and really versatile and up to the user's interpretation these are all just really basic things that you can integrate into your play and i know for myself when i was younger i had a lot of great toys that my parents bought me but i always kind of fell back on creating my own things and there's a lot of power in being able to make up your own toys and to be able to really create your own story so I think this is a really awesome way to be able to give kids that agency and to really let their imaginations go wild. So I hope you've enjoyed this craft and activity and that you make your own story stones, whether based on a beloved story or your own imagination, both are great. And it's awesome to be able to participate in the stories that you hear and to create your own. Your imagination is your guide. So I am so happy that you joined me today. And if you create your own story stones, please take a picture and share it with me in the comments. I hope you have a great week. I hope to see you next week for our next Crafternoon. Bye-bye.